my name is Bridget and welcome to my channel for today's video we are going to be talking about the top 10 animals that I would not want to own if you've been around for a little while you'll know that I've done this little series on my channel of top 10 animals I'd like to own I did reptiles amphibians aquatics and then other style that included mammals as well as invertebrates so I couldn't really think of another category to throw in here other than what I don't want and I've seen other people do this video as well so I'm gonna do my take on it as I did with the other videos I'm gonna start with top 10 being the least likely that I don't want it and then number one being the most likely that I don't want it absolutely not never gonna happen but all the animals that I start with they're still animals that I don't want but it wouldn't be the end of the world if I got them if that makes any sense so we're just gonna go ahead and get started as always make sure you like comment and subscribe and let's get into today's video all right so number 10 it's a mixture of a few different animals I don't want any more small mammals that being hamsters mice rats guinea pigs all that kind of stuff that really only boils down to their short lifespan and their susceptibility to things like tumors and such now listen I adore small mammals they're so cute and fun and I adore them but the reality of it is is I get so attached and when I had my last hamster that was already like a year and a half old whenever I got her and I only had her for six months in those six months I got so attached and when she passed I could not function for a few days it was so traumatizing and devastating to me so I just know if I were to do that again with a small mammal it would break my heart every single time and I just don't think that I'm cut out for that I know there are other animals that I do have in my possession like a betta fish for instance that has a short lifespan as well but it's different whenever you can actually get your hands on the animal I think you guys know what I mean when you can actually interact with them and hold them and things it's just different and so small mammals in general especially no more hamsters and I'm sorry <laughs> number nine is also something that you guys might be like what why I don't want a chameleon I love chameleons they make me so happy there's not a chameleon that I see anywhere that does not instantly brighten my day but I don't think they're for me they require very specific care and it's not that I think I can't handle it I definitely could but I don't want any more animals right at this moment that are going to add more to the plate. Number eight is something that I do feel like I want. I would absolutely want this species of animal, but it's a little bit different in like the details of it, I guess. I would love to have a tortoise. However, there are a couple of tortoises that I would absolutely not want to own. Number one being a very large tortoise, like a sulcata tortoise, for instance. Love them, have so much respect for them. However, they are so friggin' big, they require a lot of space. And although we have it in our backyard, you know, like I said, we've got a few acres in the back, they're just a little bit destructive. A large tortoise, I don't think, is something that I want in my life. And the other being a very young tortoise, and that all comes down to lifespan. I will never go out and purchase a little cute tiny baby tortoise. I see them in expos all the time and I see little kids that are probably four to eight years old walking out with their little baby tortoise and it irks me so bad because the parents don't understand what they're getting themselves into because not only is that little tiny baby cute little tortoise gonna grow into this big old thing, they're gonna live a long time and will probably outlive your child. There should be some sort of like information pamphlet that lets the person know, hey, here's what to expect when you buy this animal, but that's just not the way this reptile world works, unfortunately. I would never want to care for an animal that could potentially outlive me. I don't think that's fair. And some of these tortoises can live 80, 100 years old. The lifespans are crazy with these guys. It's not something I would want to do if I'm like 80 years old and I have this 50 year old tortoise that could potentially live 50 more years, you know, it's still kicking it. But what I will say is that if there is ever an older tortoise, especially that's like real late in life and has had several homes and nobody wants it, that would be the tortoise for me. Number seven is random and <laughs> some of you guys are gonna be like why would this even be on the list because I don't think it's a very common pet for a lot of people but here in Texas I see it a lot. I don't get it okay. Number seven is a peacock. Although they are stunning birds that would make any yard look fantastic. I just can't get over that call. Have you ever heard a peacock? It is one of the most like irking noises to me and I appreciate all birds okay. I know birds are not supposed 
supposed to be quiet. It's just not something that I would ever want to listen to for several days of my life at all. Like I can handle it when I go to like the zoo or something or you know if someone's got one outside and I pass it by and I can hear it fine whatever but like if it's in my own yard and it's making that noise forever I don't want to be cocky guys. Number six on the list is a compilation of a few different types of invertebrates. I don't want any arachnids like spiders or scorpions. I don't want any centipedes and I don't want any cockroaches. These are creatures that I just can't have and be sane at the same time. I can appreciate everything, okay? I appreciate you, but I don't want you in my house. I don't wanna feel you. I don't wanna hear you if you make any noise. I don't wanna necessarily see you crawling around real, real fast. Ooh, I have chills, okay? I don't have anything else to say. I can't, not, not, none of them. Not a one. Listen, I love snakes. They're one of my favorite creatures on earth. I love watching snakes and feeling snakes and holding snakes. I just adore that. But number five is going to be large snakes. And I'm talking about things like reticulated pythons, Burmese pythons, green anacondas. Beautiful. Love them. If a snake is longer than 10 feet, I think that's kind of my cap. Where I don't really want anything longer than 10 feet. I don't feel like I'm ever going to. I just don't feel like I could provide the right space and that is because I don't understand keeping these types of snakes in tubs it doesn't work even a large custom enclosure that's still not the length of them if they're living in an enclosure where they constantly have to stay coiled up and they can't stretch out I don't think that that's right I don't think it's fair for the animal it's not enriching not knocking anyone who has these snakes okay please don't think that I'm judging anybody just for me personally I I don't think it would be a fun time to have to ask two people to help me handle my snake. Do you know what I mean? I hope I'm making sense by saying that. It's just not something that I want to do. And I know that if I were to have this type of big snake, I would want to provide them with literally an entire bedroom in a house or larger. Number four consists of an iguana or a monitor. When I originally came up with this list, I said, okay, I definitely don't ever want a monitor and I don't ever want an iguana. Monitors to me, I think there are certain types that could be okay as captive animals. One example would be an Aki monitor. I think they're super fun and cool, and I think that they could thrive really well in a captive environment. However, things like savanna monitors or water monitors, that's where I draw the line. Monitors for sure don't want in my life. Iguanas, however, I will never go out and get an iguana. People don't know what they're getting into. Parents don't know what they're getting into. And so there's a lot of iguanas that are in shelters and reptile rescues. I like iguanas, especially rhino iguanas, have my whole heart, okay? But to be honest, an iguana is a big deal. That is a big commitment. So for me, I don't think that I would want to just like take that on just because I feel like it. I never think of iguanas as like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to have one. I really want one so bad. It's my dream. It's not. If I never have an iguana in my entire life, fine. I respect iguanas. So obviously if one came into my care, whether through a rescue situation, a fostering situation, whatever, I'm not gonna not take care of it just because it's not an animal that I don't particularly desire. I would. They're still gonna be on the list because I really don't see myself getting one, but we'll see. Number three on the list is a big one for me. I really disagree with these being kept as pets. Marsupials of any kind, things like lemurs, sugar gliders, opossums. If you don't know what a marsupial is they're basically a pouch animal. As babies they live in the pouch of their mom and that's how they get their nutrients and everything. I might get some hate in saying that I don't think sugar gliders should be kept as pets. It's just my personal opinion. I want to throw that out there. I just feel like marsupials, they're so wild and they're so contact driven if that makes any sense. And a lot of people who get these animals truly don't have the time and ability to be right there in constant contact with that animal. I don't like the idea of marsupials being kept as pets, so I don't want any, and I will never get any if I have any say in it. Number two is very similar with the marsupial thing, and that is primates of any kind. Things like chimpanzees, marmosets, 
frequently kept as pets um, and I don't like it. If you don't know what a primate is, that's basically a placental type of animal which is very similar to us where the baby lives within the mother's body. They feed off of like an umbilical cord type of situation. I don't think that they should be kept as pets because they are absolutely way too close to the human race. I think they're incredibly intelligent, way too intelligent to be kept in captivity because that is when they get frustrated, they can become aggressive, and they just don't get what they need. They're not getting enough stimulation that they would get in the wild. And I just don't understand why they're kept as pets. They're just not pets to me and uh, I don't want them. And now we have reached number one and this is a big deal. Again, I love snakes, adore them, can't live without them. However, I can absolutely live without venomous snakes. There are people who keep them as pets. I've seen several people decide to keep things like copperheads and stuff. Y'all do whatever you want to do. If it's for educational purposes, I get it. I think it's great to be able to have these snakes at like some sort of educational program to show people things, teach them things, you know, the difference in venomous versus non-venomous and like the way that their head shape is and all these differences between the two to be able to see that right up close without harming yourself in an educational way, I think is great. However, I have seen people keep them as pets just because they want to and I think that's just, <laughs> Not great. Again, I don't want to offend anybody. If that's what you do, fine. Don't come for me. For me personally, I live in Texas. These things are outside. It's scary to go out into the woods or on a hike or something and have to be on constant alert. You're not just going to go into your reptile room and like take out your rattlesnake and chill. You know what I mean? I don't know. Having a snake like that that I have to constantly be on alert with, like how do you go in and clean the enclosure? You have to be careful with giving water and then like feeding. It's not something that I ever want to partake in, so I'm not going to. Yes, I do have Western hog noses. Technically, they are a venomous snake. They are such small snakes with small bodies, and their venom is meant to be injected into things like toads and lizards. It's not the type of venom that's going to affect a human. It's just going to basically like flare up as if some sort of wasp sting would do. Like I said, it's meant for like frogs and toads and stuff. So yeah, it's a venomous snake but it's not a venomous snake you know what I mean I don't want any venomous snakes and that concludes my list of top 10 animals that I do not want I know that there were a lot more animals it was kind of more categories it all goes together I think that gave you guys a general idea of things that I just don't want so that is basically it that is the end of this series I hope that you guys have enjoyed if you did enjoy this video please give us a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button on your way out I really appreciate it also hit the notification bell so you can know when I upload next and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.